You're watching DCTV News, a student media production from the Digital Media Program at San Joaquin Delta College. This episode is hosted and produced by students enrolled in the Fall Video Production course. I'm Veronica Argumento. And I'm Dominic. Thanks for joining us today. This is a show that brings you news and information that happens on the San Joaquin Delta College campus. Our first story is a serious topic. According to the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Service administrations, over 15% of people over the age of 18 have reported having a substance use disorder in 2020. Dante Mercado introduces us to a local man who reflects on his youth and has a message for young people to stay away from drugs. Tengo 63 años de edad, me llamo Gabriel Román Wiskovich y empecé a usar la droga cuando tenía 22 años. La droga te consume, ¿viste? le pierde el interés a tu familia, a tus hijos y a todo lo que te motiva, nada más piensas en droga, en droga, en droga todo el tiempo. Me ha afectado mucho con mis seres queridos que me han visto este, drogado y aparte que pude haber logrado muchas cosas que no pude lograr. La droga te hace cambiar todo totalmente tu personalidad porque yo nada más pensaba en, en el vicio. No pensaba en los seres que me querían ni nada de eso. Entonces, pero ahora me ha hecho pensar y ahora pienso no usarla para te, te dedicar más tiempo para mi familia y los seres que me quieren. Me ha afectado económicamente porque he gastado el dinero en cosas que no debía haber gastado y pude haber hecho muchas otras cosas con ese dinero. Todo el dinero que he ganado lo, lo he gastado en la droga. El desafío más grande que tengo es que cuando salgo de mi casa tengo que pasar por un lugar donde sé que venden droga y la tentación me llama pero me aguanto. La motivación que me ha dado es mi familia, mis nietas y este, que me dice ella cristiano. Me arrepiento de haber usado droga en mi vida porque pude haber logrado muchas, muchísimas cosas en mi vida y por causa de la droga no las pude lograr. Le, le aconsejo a todos los jóvenes, a toda la juventud que ni la prueben porque al probarla ya se envician y entonces no la van a poder dejar y van a tener sufrir mucho en la vida por ese vicio. Quisiera darle un mensaje a toda la juventud que les recomiendo que por favor ni prueben la droga cuando se lo ofrezcan porque es algo que adicta muy rápido y después le va a causar muchos problemas en su vida. Our next story is about the all-gender restrooms on campus. Nico Combs has our next story. He interviewed Jasmine Arroyo about why they are so important. I think when students see that we have gender neutral bathrooms, it's kind of like a signifier to LGBTQ folks, specifically like trans and non-binary students, that like they're welcome here, that they have a place to exist because if they have something as basic as a place to safely use the restroom, they know, okay, well, I'm safe to exist here and I'm safe to be myself. So I think it just shows to not just the LGBTQ community itself, but like um, other folks that Delta supports queer and trans students. We have multiple uh, bathrooms. We have a, set, a bathroom on the first floor of Shima. We all have another gender neutral bathroom on the fourth floor of Shima. We have two here in the second floor of Danner. And then we have another set of gender neutral bathrooms underneath the forums. So something that a lot of people, I think, kind of forget is that there are also disabled people that have assistants or people who accompany them that may be of another gender than them. So if we have a gender neutral restroom, both the disabled person and their assistant can safely use the restroom. You also have parents who sometimes bring their kids on campus, again, of different uh, genders or sexes. So then they are also able to safely use the restrooms if they are deemed gender neutral. But I think Delta has done a lot of good by having established a Pride Center, by establishing gender neutral bathrooms. By no means is it like the end of LGBTQ rights um, here in Stockton and our community, 
but I think it's like a good beginning, but I think we still have a ways to go. Thank you, Nico. Our next story is from you, Veronica. Yes, I learned more about the Directing Adults on the Right Track for Education or DART program in my story. Let's find out what this resource offers Delta students. I am Dr. Heather Malloy, and I am with the San Joaquin Delta College. Uh, currently, my position is uh, Program Manager of Delta Sierra Adult Education Alliance. And I also oversee the uh, DART program, uh, our learning community for adults returning back to school. DART stands for Directing Adults, the Right Track for Employment. So my name is Laura Marellanes. I'm the Resource Specialist for CTE, the Undecided and Undeclared Track. And I am also the liaison for the California Conservation Court and then um, Resource Specialist for the DART Learning Community as well. My name is Sarah. I go by Saruji on the radio here at Delta. My major is multimedia. I'm studying digital media currently, but I'm moving into multimedia next semester. Here at Delta, I am closely tied into the digital media program, obviously, but I also am part of the DART learning community. We're just upstairs in 217 in the Shima building. Um, we work with CTE and workforce development. DART stands for Directing Adults on the Right Track to Employment. DART is a learning community that helps non-traditional learners transition from adult schools into college or long gap years into college and have an easy start into online schooling. Because community is what it's about. Um, it's to really, you need to feel the connection within the community to, in order to feel supported and then in, in essence, you know, to be successful. The DART provides our students is just a second chance for them to get started on something that either they laid off or they couldn't get to it during that time in their life. So now they're coming back to school. A lot of our students, it's their first time coming to college. So they get really excited, especially when they get, they hear the idea that they can come to college while working on their high school equivalency. So that's a really big thing that they're doing at the adult school. We are located here at Shima 217, um, where we're actually um, in the center of this, the CTE and Workforce Development Center, where, where WorkNet is housed. We also have job force specialists here. And what's very important about this, our location being central to also when students come, they also might be looking for you know jobs. And so we connect them also to the job force specialists, especially also to WorkNet. Um, WorkNet provides um, a variety of different supportive services, especially when it comes to training programs. So if a student is going into a career technical education program, WorkNet can step in and help support and supplies, um, and, and even with some state licensing, depending on what the, what the program is. So basically, we have our DART Learning Community webpage on, at the Delta College homepage. So you can find us there. You can search it on the side and just search up DART Learning Community even Google it, DART Learning Community, San Joaquin Delta College. And on there you'll find a lot of information about what does DART stand for, what are the opportunities that students get. We also have a layout of the classes during the semester, what the schedule looks like, the class codes, the instructors. Um, and then we also have right on the bottom of our page, we have a contact, um, we have a little submittal where you can submit your contact information so that we can get back to the student there. So we basically get that little ticket, it gets sent over to Heather and I, and then that's how we connect with our students. Um, and then at the very bottom of the page, you also see the pictures of our instructors and basically our whole team. So you get an idea of, oh, okay, this is the person that's going to teach this class. This is the professor. This is the counselor I'll be working with. So you find all of your information on the web page. Thank you for that story, Veronica. In our next story, we move on to an interview with the principal of Middle College High School. That's right. You interviewed Mrs. Hara, principal of Middle College. Let's watch your story, Dominic. The first principal was the one that started, uh, Jeff Thompson. He started the program, um, was here a couple years, and then we had Sherry Balian, who has been the longest running principal so far. I believe she was here for 15 years. So we have been here for 23 years. So 2000 was our starting year. When we started in order to kind of build the program, it was pretty much open to all students in order to get our numbers up. Um, we currently are an application program. Um, we do accept students from Lodi Unified, that's the district that we're in, but we also take students from Stockton Unified. We've had some students as far as Manteca or Tracy. We are an all AVID school, so AVID is school-wide, ninth through 12th grade. Part of it is looking for a student that fits the AVID model. So AVID is Advancement via Individual Determination 
and part of it is looking at grades and we focus more on a B C student so a 3.0 GPA is pretty ideal in order to get into the program we also try and look at the first and family to go to college so we want to try and serve those families that are interested in getting an AA getting a bachelor's going straight into a four-year program and just looking for well-rounded students that are dedicated and committed to doing well with their education so the applications typically will open about beginning of December and they're open until mid-February or so so there is quite a bit of time we typically don't go out into the community but anybody can apply some families from delta college you know they hear about us on campus and so they'll come directly to our office and then we're able to give them the information provide the application for them and then we do a lot of word of mouth so you know my my cousin attended and that's how they hear about us and then we make sure that it may be a fit for them once we've reviewed them students will get a call to do an interview they will have an interview with a panel that's composed of a middle college person so like a teacher or a staff member and then a delta staff um, so delta instructors um, deans will help sit on those panels um, we'll usually have a student representative so then that way during the interview the student can ask us any questions and we can kind of answer it from any angle right so we try to keep that relationship open so that we select candidates that will be successful and kind of help build both programs and support the campus. Staying local to campus, we now go to Cesar Rosas Jr., who put together a story highlighting the digital media department. Hi, I'm Leo Marquez and I am the lab tech in the digital media department. Hi, my name is Adriana Broger, and I'm a professor of digital media. I teach all of the classes in our department. I teach fully online, I also teach in high flex, and I teach um, our in-person classes having to do with teaching in our radio station. So I don't teach any of the classes. Uh, my job as lab tech is to run each of our studios, uh, as well as I serve as the program director for our radio station. We have a fully FCC licensed radio station. So we are 93.5 FM. We are a low power uh, FM station. So that means we just reach about 25 miles of our radius here in Stockton. Some of the challenges to teaching and, and running this lab is that we could not, I couldn't do it alone. I'm really grateful to have a full-time lab tech because Leo plays a necessary role in our department. Um, he provides students with so much support during the time that I am in class, I'm in lecture. I would recommend any students to choose digital media simply because I, I think it's a great space to be creative and show off your personality. Students should choose digital media because we offer a really exciting hands-on program because digital media communication is critical. Media is something that is needed in all outlets of the world um, in, in many different industries. It is what everybody's relying on. We're all watching videos, listening to podcasts, watching content in order to inform ourselves as to what's going on. Media is, is everywhere. Like we have our phones. And so I think it's, it's incredibly beneficial to have those skill sets. Digital media is a very welcoming program. So we're a program really built on community. We encourage our students to get to know each other, to get to work together, to work collaboratively. Being part of our community is really nice. We have a very supportive group and we're welcoming to new students. Thank you, Caesar. Now we move to a story about soccer. Yes, Dominic. James Basuto interviewed people to talk about how soccer can be impactful and help build community. My name is James uh, Basuto, and I've been playing soccer now for about uh, nine years. Soccer has taught me many lessons. It uh, brings people uh, from all over the place in one small area. Um, it shows how much of an impact soccer has on uh, bringing people together. It not only brings people together, but it 
um, brings people closer in a, in a bond kind of way. And, uh, it's something that a lot of people have in common. So uh, to show the things that they have in common, we get together and we play, um, have fun. Doesn't matter if it's a real game or if it's just kicking the ball around with your friends. Uh, it's something that uh, we all share. Uh, something that we all love. So that's something that uh, soccer does for our community. I think soccer brings a uh, community together. Everyone's at the Great Bowl and they're all having fun. It brings in families, friends together. Uh, and to me, it helps impact my life. It helps me forget about everything I'm going through. It's like a therapy session. Yeah. And uh, as a community, it brought like, as you can see in the Great Bowl, it made like everyone like come play as a team. So I guess like it brings the community together. Our next story is a feature on a Mustang baseball player by Jack Worthen. Since the story was captured, our Delta baseball team suffered a major loss when Will Wentworth died last week. We want to take a moment of silence to honor his life. Our condolences to Will's family, teammates, and our campus. I started playing baseball around four or five years old. My dad put me in t-ball at YMCA and I've been playing ever since. I just love one, it gives me something to do, but two, it's just all around fun. I love hitting, I love playing defense, I love hanging out with my friends. Some of the people I've met playing baseball, I've been friends with for my whole life and they're like my best friends, my brothers. I just love going out there every day and being out there in that environment. It's a very positive environment. I knew I wanted to play baseball at Delta because it's the best baseball junior college in the state. Uh, coach Peters is a great coach and it's, right down the street from my house. I live here in Stockton and it's gonna save my parents a lot of money. Able to fit my academics around my baseball schedule. Um, I wasn't sure how my baseball schedule was gonna look because I'm a freshman, but now that I kind of have it down, I have a set schedule, I'm able to fit in my academics around that and it's saved me a lot of st stress So, because I, I don't have to go to an in-person class. Um, I'm able to do it at my own pace. I love going out to baseball. I love hanging out with my friends, the workouts, the environment. Nothing beats it. Um, the school part isn't too hard, but some, some classes are harder than others. But overall, it's, it's been great. All right, That's that. it? All right, let's see if this one works. All right. We hope you enjoyed catching up on this episode. And as always, the goal with our programming is to highlight stories that matter to the people on our campus and in our community. If you have a story idea, please be in touch with us through social media. You can find us at DMediaSJDC. Thanks for watching.